From this valley they say you are going I will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile For they say you are taking the sunshine That has brightened our path all the while Do you think of the valley you're leaving? Oh, how lonely and dreary it will be do you think of the fond heart you're breaking? And the sad Gary's youngest son, Mike, put together this obituary for the burial. And Derek, our chaplain, read it at the burial. And I thought that it was such, so good that I would like to read it to you so that you know something about Harry. Okay, there you go. He was born Harry Adna Farrell on January 29, 1916. The sixth of seven children born to Elma and Anna Farrell on the Rosebud Indian Reservation in South Dakota. These are his siblings, Maddie Bell, who is called Maddie, El Clinton Elborn, Clint, <laughs> Eva Maud, who died in childhood, Grace, Beatrice, Grace, Benjamin Kempster, Ben. His son is here right now. Harry, and it was Harry, and Glenn Thomas was Glenn. <coughs> Harry grew up on farms, and he worked harvests in the Midwest. He was a man's man, as a youth, he hunted and loved to fish. A story he often told, he and his brother Ben had taken the family car to go hunting. The shotgun went off and blew a hole through the roof of the Model T. Needless to say, their mother Anna was not pleased. Fishing continued to be a great passion all through Harry's life. He married his first wife, Grace, in the early 1930s to support the family. He drove trucks and hauled fruit and vegetables from South Texas to Northern Idaho. They had four children, Harry Jr., who died in childhood, Patricia Ann, Patty, she is here, Jackie LaVon, Jack, he is here, Charlotte, I didn't know she was called that, but she is not here. They separated and divorced shortly after Charlotte was born in 1941. And when the war broke out in 1942, Harry joined the Navy. He quickly became a chief petty officer and taught diesel mechanics until the end of the war. During that time, he met his next life partner, Layla May Pat. They roamed the country together with her daughter, Ramona Lee, she's here, destined to become Harry's first stepdaughter, riding in the rear window of their 36-year Ford Coupe. This new family would travel to wherever he was stationed until the end of the war. A little side <coughs> note here. During 1943, in spring, while he was stationed in Cleveland, Ohio, and I was a 21-year-old working for the government in Cleveland, Ohio, my friend and I were coming home from a play, and the streetcars and buses were on strike. So we didn't know how we were going to get to my house where we were spending the night. So we walked into a bar. <laughs> and there we saw this man at the bar picking up drinks for his buddies who were seated in the back room and he came over and invited us to join them needless and to make a long story short Dorothy my buddy married his buddy and a year later went out to Idaho to marry Keith. 
And I said, I think you're nuts, but you know about it. <laughs> but they were married over 50 years before wow. he passed away. Wow. I remain friends with Dorothy. Harry and Keith remain friends. And many, many years later, they are living in Sacramento area. I am in Santa Ana, and Harry and his second wife are in Long Beach. And that, we go on from there. So after the war, they settled in Long Beach. Harry trained to be a pipe fitter, and that ultimately became his life's trade. He married Pat in the late 40s, and they purchased a home in the Los Altos area of Long Beach. Then the accident. A child is born. Michael Wayne Mike, he is here. We are now up to sixth. Harry had a wonderfully successful career through the 50s and 60s. He worked for several different companies that specialized in what today is referred to as common trench. That's the underground trench that carries everything you need to live, water, sewer, and power. Today, it also carries TV cables and fiber optics. He was the vice president and head estimator for two local companies that provided this part of the construction phase for projects like Huntington Harbor, Rancho Bernardo, Palomar Airport, the Vandenberg Air Force Base launch pads, and possibly half the golf courses in Southern California. The list is huge. In the early 70s, Pat became ill with cancer. Harry retired to care for her, and she passed away shortly afterward. Enter wife number three, <laughs> Lena Josephine Lee, me. <laughs> Incidentally, well, that he's repeating now what I just told you about how we met. <laughs> they began dating. We met in, in, in 43. They began dating in 75, and we were married in July of 77, 38 years together. Along with Lee, a new family, five stepchildren, Kenny, Alice, Donnie, Patty, and Tommy, all here. Now we're up to 11 siblings. <laughs> Ultimately, oh no, lifetime number four was a rare experience to be starting over again with a new developing family. At this stage of one's life, a new wife and five cool new adult stepchildren. They purchased a home in San Juan Capistrano and the two of them moved in together. Thunderbirds and motor homes. Harry loved cars and was always ready for a road trip. On the road, once again, they both enjoyed traveling. Harry had several motor homes through their years together, and they traveled through nearly every state in this great country. Lee's unique talent for making friends had brought many new people and relationships into Harry's life. Most of them he has outlived. At the bittersweet part of growing as old as he was, fortunate enough to do one of Harry's favorite places, Lone Pine, California. He and Lee made a trek there twice a year to go fishing, sometimes with the family, sometimes not, for probably actually 26 years of our 36 years together possibly some of his fondest memories with his family. And talking about families, another great love of Harry's, all the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, and the great-great-grandchildren, far too many to count, only Lee would know for sure. <laughs> Crazy, I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy, crazy for feeling so blue. I knew you'd love. 
love me as long as you want it. Well, my name is Joanne Reeder, and I lived in Mariner Village for many years. And I met um, the Farrells walking around the one mile every morning. And I would have my dogs, and we would walk, and we would talk, and just really got to know each other, and really enjoyed that time. Now with Harry, I, if you notice, I'm wearing red. We were great Angel fans. Me and too. I know that. I know we were too, but Harry and I really shared a lot where the Angels were concerned. So, Something I didn't know about. I know. Well, I would sneak over. So, but anyway, you know, I just really enjoyed the time uh, that we would spend early in the morning. And, you know, it's a great way to start your day with Lee and with Harry. You know, just having a great smile in the morning and, you know, it just brings back great memories. And, you know, we're sad to see him go, but we are so happy for the life that he led. And he's up there with those other angels. <laughs> and I think they're wearing red and hitting balls up there, on too. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Life I love is making music with my friends And I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again Going places that I've never been Seeing things that I may never see again and I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again other next door neighbor before I tell you my name I'll tell you that uh, Harry taught me to love uh, hummingbird, hummingbirds and the way that uh, he and Lee uh, would uh, patrol the neighborhood uh, yeah the, what I didn't tell you is that uh, my name is Dan Farrell and the Farrells uh, were at different branches for the last couple of hundred years but we were neighbors for the last 15, so I had a real affection for Harry and Lee, and I uh, wanted to uh, share that uh, my uncle Harry was uh, the son of uh, Harry Farrell, the uh, contractor who did uh, trenching and plumbing back in Atlantic City, uh, back uh, the uh, turn of the century, and uh, dabbled in politics, but uh, he... Uh, also, uh, my uncle uh, married a girl from South Dakota. I don't know how close to Rosebud, but uh, I uh, tease my aunt uh, considerably about uh, uh, the existence of South Dakota, having uh, said I was never there. But the uh, story I like to remember about Harry is that when we moved next door, uh, uh, we moved from uh, Dana Point, and we lived in Huntington Beach before that, I went to the eye doctor and uh, I sat down and the uh, doctor said, well, uh, he said, uh, it's been a while since you've uh, had your exam. And I said, right. He said, uh, you're looking uh, pretty well, uh, Harry. And I, I said, huh? And he said, uh, he said, you may need some new glasses, uh, Harry. And I said, uh, my name is Dan, not Harry. He said, do you live on Commodore Court? I said, yes, I do. He said, well, I uh, think you've got the uh, wrong feral here. So uh, anyway, I changed eye doctors shortly after. <laughs>
<laughs> I had the same experience at the same eye doctor. <laughs> And finally, the person said, you know, do you live on Commodore Court? Harry was there for a visit, and they asked the address, and I gave the street. And then I said, you know, I think you've got the record for Dan, not for Harry. <laughs> Instead of having sweet dreams about you, you don't love me, it's plain. Kathy and I moved in across the street from Harry and Lee about 15 years ago and I remember every morning I'd see Harry out in the garage and the door would open and the sun was shining in and he'd be out there tinkering away and he always had a happy smile but one of the things I remembered that he said that made a real effect on me was I would always say to him Harry you're such a good neighbor and he would say in order to have good neighbors you have to be a good neighbor <laughs> and I think you can apply that to all walks of life. But Harry just had such a good attitude, and, and, and I'll always miss him. And then Lee's very special to me because her birthday is the day that my mother died. And my mother died when I was fairly young. And so I've sort of adopted Lee as my mother. <laughs> so we're very She's another daughter, and I'm collecting them all over the place. <laughs> and stay right here. And Harry and Kathy have the same birthday. So I think because it's Harry's 100th, and it's Kathy's, we should say. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to and you. And another one. Happy birthday to you, Harry and Kathy. Happy birthday. On a trail in the hills of old Wyoming, where the coyotes wail in the gloaming, for it's there where my heart's at home. In the night, let me rest with the blue sky for my ceiling till the wind's lullaby comes a steal. My name is Marianne Noonan, and um, I have known. Alice and Lee since 1969 and uh, you um, because I was <laughs> supposed to spend the night one time when we were in college with uh, Alice and by the time I got to their house at that point in Santa Ana Alice had gone to bed and that was when I first really talked with Patty for hours and hours so we've been friends that long and I didn't see as much of the Cache brothers but um, I'm an only child, so I felt adopted, and um, 
it's funny what you remember. And I do remember I was, I think, taking Alice to the airport when she told me that her mom was getting married and marrying Harry, and she told me the story. And little did I know what a huge effect this was going to have on my life. Um, because Farrell's and Cachet's have been more family than family to me. And I rented Mike's house uh, on Fairbrook in Long Beach for many, many years. And um, they stuck by me when I don't know whether I would have. My life kind of unraveled. And I will be forever grateful. But when I was working, I worked shift work, and I usually only had one day off a week. So sometimes I would be home, often sleeping, when, when Harry came to continue to do the art. But I felt that we really became good friends. I mean, he was kind of a father figure to me, but even more my friend. Uh, my own dad died when I was 20 after a long illness. So I had Harry in my life for twice the length of time that I had my own dad, who I adored. And I always thought that they were different men in many ways, but I always thought I would have enjoyed a beer together. And when, my, uh, when Harry would come, I hope I'm not telling tales out of school, but when Harry would come to work on the yard, which is a big, beautiful yard, or to do repairs or whatever, occasionally, he might have a beer afterwards. <laughs> and I always thought I wasn't supposed to tell you that. But I, uh, he used to drink a whole case of I know. <laughs> Not when he was it was okay. And so I always kept some beer for him in the refrigerator, whether I was there or not. And um, at the beginning of December, I have a friend who lives in Las Vegas, and we don't always exchange Christmas presents or birthday presents. It's just kind of if we see something that we think the other one might like, we'll get it. And she happened to be visiting, and she kept saying, I have something for you, I have something for you. Now, she never met Harry. And what it was, and is, and which will certainly have a place of honor always with me, it's a replica sign for Killian's Red Ale. And that's what I used to get for Harry. And I just felt like it was a little a little message, you know? But the two other brief things, um, I know that Mike has repainted the house and uh, into a little more contemporary color, but those of you who've been to, to Fairbrook, Harry always kept it a very Irish green. And I should note that I'm 100% Irish on both sides. And the Farrells are from the same part of Ireland, a very small part that my family was from. So maybe we were related at some point. <laughs> but um, in any case, I, I had friends coming for dinner one time many years ago, and they had been there several times. But you know, the streets are kind of curvy there, and it's easy to get turned around. So I had emphasized, you know, just remember, it's the green house. You can't miss this Kelly green house. <laughs> And they didn't show up, and they didn't show up, and finally they did, and his friend of mine's from Texas, and he's just a little exasperated, and he said, I couldn't find this place. He said, I wrote 5818 Greenhouse. Uh. So, <laughs> so, but um, in any case, the other thing is Harry's phenomenal green thumb, which I am in awe of. And I knew that he could grow anything anywhere when one time I looked down, and he always had wonderful tomatoes, and I looked down, and any crack between the walkway and the garage, this little crack about this big, I guess a tomato seed must have fallen in, and there was a full-growing tomato plant with a tomato on it. So I thought, you know, we could do worse than to be remembered for our tomatoes and our sense of humor and our warmth and our love, and I just, immensely grateful that Harry Farrell was in my life and that you married him. <laughs> I'm back in baby's arms How I miss those loving arms I'm back where I belong Back in baby's arms Don't We never did before 
just a little bit of what Mary Ann said. I'm Lee, mom's oldest uh, son, oldest of five. And so, of course, I've known Harry for over 38 years. And Harry, and I said some of this at the burial service, among other things, as Mary Ann said, Harry did like a beer or two or a glass of whiskey regularly. And I, my father-in-law was much the same way. Norm would have a beer or six, you know, <laughs> regularly. And any time we had family gatherings and these two guys got together, now Norm also was a good old boy, sort of a redneck, in construction, but Harry and Norm were, they bonded and they had a lot of similarities. And I do imagine, and I imagine at the burial service that the two of them are up there <laughs> chugging a case or whatever, having a good old time. Um, in addition, I, and I mentioned at the, at the service that Harry, unlike everything we hear these days about good health and diet, the guy ate whatever he wanted for his whole life, eggs, meat, you name it, and he did really well, so it makes me wonder, why am I trying to be a vegetarian and all this stuff? <laughs> and uh, I'll just close with uh, so much gratitude that I have that these two reconnected after, I guess, 32 years. Kind of an amazing story to me, but that Harry was an amazing uh, provider and a person that took care of my mom, the made her feel safe. The handyman man in the world. Yeah, yes, has been noted, he could fix anything and just, I never had a, a moment's doubt that my mother and Harry were like that and that she was in the best of hands, so. the saddle again Out where a friend is a friend Where the longhorn cattle feed on the lowly jimson weed I'm back in the saddle again Riding the range once more Toting my old 44 where you sleep out every night And the only law is right Back in the saddle again Whoopie tie i o oh, Rocking to and fro Back in the saddle again Whoopie tie i -E, I go my way Back in the saddle again Whoopie tie, I oh, rocking to and fro, back in the saddle again. Whoopie tie, I, hey, I go my way. Hi, I'm Carol Carlson, and I live up the street. And uh, when my son became involved with one of the grandchildren, <laughs> and they married each other. I have to be a real part of this family. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to share with you that uh, uh, I, uh, Patty had an open house, and that's the first time I met your son. And uh, then I heard that he was down here in this environment here. And so I made some brownies for him, and I came down, and we had a great conversation. We had a great time together, and then it got to be a habit. So every other day, I brought him brownies. <laughs> and one day, I came down without them, and he said to me, did you forget something? <laughs> and it was just a beautiful time that we had spent together, and he would talk to me about how he grew up on a farm, in the Midwest, and, and uh, we just really had a good time together, and I rejoiced for the time I could spend with him. He was a very, very loving man. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just my way 
all saying I love you I'm always walking after midnight searching for you I stop to see a weeping willow crying on his pillow maybe he's crying for me and as the skies turn gloomy not one whisper to me I'm lonesome Well, I'm Michael Cachet, uh, Don Cachet's son, and well, I was going to talk a little bit about Tuttle Creek, but before I talk about Tuttle Creek, I wanted to tell you about the, time, the many times I spent overnight for my birthday. Uh, Grandpa would make waffles in the morning, which I so enjoyed, uh, but this one time, you know, Grandpa's always in the garage working on things, and I'm out there, and uh, he had all these pipes, uh, copper pipes, and he taught me how to cut up a piece of copper pipe, pound it flat, then get the grinder out and turn it into a sharp knife. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty fun and cool. I kept that sharp, that sharp knife, that uh, piece of copper for a long time. I wish I still had it today. <laughs> so, I don't know, about maybe six or eight months ago, I had the grinder in the garage and my son was in there. And I said, hey, come over here. Let me show you something about this grinder. <laughs> so I was teaching my son something from Grandpa Harry. Um, we went to Tuttle Creek a lot. My dad, my sister, my mom. Yeah, you came up sometimes. Um, and we had a lot of fun in Tuttle Creek. Even when I uh, became an adult, I got a uh, motorhome, me and Katie and the kids came up there with Grandpa, Mike and Gary, um, and we had a lot of good memories. And this one time when I was, I don't know, probably maybe 10 or 11, we got up there and you could see like a lot of trucks way off up in the distance. And Grandpa says, I think they're making a movie out there. Remember this? I remember that. And I, I was all intrigued. I'm like, well, I wonder what movie they're making out there. That'd be neat. That's not, it doesn't look like it's too far. He's like, no, it's just at the foothills. So my brother and I, we decided to go on a hike. And it was a long way to get to this movie set. But we were bound and determined to get out there. So we finally get out there, and they're making this movie called Tremors with Kevin Bacon, Michael Gross, Reba McIntyre, and we got to meet everyone. It was really exciting. <laughs> so, seven degrees of separation because of Grandpa Harry, I met Kevin Bacon. <laughs> so, we did, I had a lot of good memories with Grandpa, with Grandma, and I love, I love both of them very much, and really excited to be here today to celebrate Grandpa's 100th birthday. So thank you. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Don't let them pick guitars and drive them old trucks. Make them be doctors and lawyers and such. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. They'll never stay home and they're always alone Even with someone they love Cowboys ain't easy to love and they're harder to hold And they'd rather give you a song than diamonds and gold Long star bell buckles Old faded Levi's And each night begins a new day And if you don't understand him And he don't die Hi everyone I'm um, the, I'm Mike's daughter Riley And um, my favorite memory with Grandpa Is when I brought up our horses here And it was really fun watching him um, Playing with them
I remember all the good times. We had this miniature pony that liked to eat his hair. <laughs> <laughs> and it would go like, yum. I don't want carrots. I want his hair. <laughs> it was like, hi, my name is Biscuit. It was really fun bringing him up here. Even though it was like a two hour drive, it was still worth it. <laughs> and a stinky car. <laughs> It was really fun and I, and I miss him so much. I was thinking about him since I had to go out of school early today to come here. I was thinking, oh my goodness, I, 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 <laughs> I got two hours in a car and then I got homework when I get home. <laughs> I should just do it in the car and <laughs> get it over with. <laughs> it was really fun and I just miss him so much, and Grandma was really good with me. I'm heading for the last round of Gonna saddle old paint for the last time and ride So long, old pal It's time your tears were dry I'm heading for the last round Get along, little doggy, get along, get along, get along. Hi, I'm Stephanie Hansen, and um, my mom and Harry, and, and we got to know each other from um, St. Nicholas, the church that they would go to on Sunday and then we'd go to breakfast afterwards and we only, had only known Harry and Lee for about the last 10 years and um, my mom passed about this time last year so um, I'm sure she was up there saying okay Harry come on <laughs> back to you oh yeah. I almost forgot we met at Polly's and Harry and I would leave Sunday morning at 7.15, and we'd be on the Coast Highway going all the way down to Laguna Canyon Road, and we would take that up to Moulton, and we'd get to Polly's. And one day we saw these two sitting across from us, and we decided that we would start talking with them. And from then on, we became pretty good friends, and uh, so I'm so happy that Stephanie was able to come and join us today. And I'm sorry Mary isn't here, but another interesting thing was in becoming friends, I discovered that she was a Navy veteran just like I am and happened to be stationed at the same place where I was, apparently at different times. I didn't know her then, but I had not met anybody who was in the hospital corps of the Navy. I've met many, many women who were waves, but always in a different area. And so it, it was quite, quite a coincidence. Yes, yes. That's what life is all about. <laughs> yippee I yippee Faces gaunt, their eyes were blurred, their shirts all soaked with sweat. They're riding hard to catch the herd, but they ain't caught them yet. They've got to ride forever on that range up in the sky. On horses snorting fire as they ride on, hear them cry. When at home in San Juan, Harry could usually be found in his garage, puttering with the car 
are trying to make something work that probably should not have been allowed to work ever again. <laughs> or in his garden, building a new plant or painting some sort of yard art, a gnome or a cement squirrel, he loved to be outside. He also had a passion for reading. His favorite author, Louis Lemoore, Harry was always up for a good western. Yes, we can see him now, riding off into the sunset. Bye-bye for now, Harry. We'll be seeing you on the other side. You betcha! <laughs>